Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O King of Israel, Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. O oh God, whom to honor and love perfectly is righteousness, increase in us your holy grace, so that this sacred ceremony may remind us of the triumph entry of Jesus Christ into earthly Jerusalem, and most of all serve toward our own sanctification and eventual entry into your heavenly we ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, and art one God, forever and ever. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered the council and said, What are we to do for this man performs many miracles? If we let him go thus, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. And one of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, you know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is expedient for you that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish. So from that day on, they took counsel how to put him to death. For as they said, the Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. Let us pray. O oh God, who didst ordain that a multitude of Israel's believing people should honor with the tumultuous joy the Savior before his sacred passion, and didst inspire the crowd to spread branches of all the trees and palms of the way, and to sing Hosanna in his praise. Grant that we bearing these palms, the symbol of victory over evil, and these branches, the symbols of meekness and justice, the gifts of the Holy Spirit within our heart, may go forth to wage incessant war against the forces of evil, depravity and falsehood, and so guided through life in the way of light, truth, and justice, we may enter into everlasting glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Increase, O God, the faith of those who put their trust in you, and grant that strengthen in their love of you, they will never suffer disappointment. May the blessings of these branches of palm, which we, your servants, are about to receive and carry in commemoration of a solemn and sacred day in the life of Jesus Christ, inspire us to turn our eyes heavenward to your holy Jerusalem. Bless, O oh Lord, these branches of palm, as you did choose Noah to be the new father of the human race, Moses to be the leader of Israel's people, and Jesus Christ to be the Savior of all. 
grant we beseech you that contemplating the wonderful ways of your providence we may fervently unite our wills with your holy will in the work of our own sanctification and salvation we ask this through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever When they drew near to Jerusalem, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, where you will find an ass tied to a colt with her. You untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the ass and the colt and put their garments on them, and he sat thereon. Most of the crowds spread their garments on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds who went before him and that followed him shouted,
Let us go forth in peace. Blessed is he who trusts in God Almighty.
Let us adore the Savior who rode in royal triumph into Jerusalem. It is written that they shall strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am resurrected, I go before you into Galilee. There you will see me, says the Lord. Spirit, Amen. we will go unto the altar of God. God Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us all make an examination of our conscience. for the confession that you have made for the next three nights besides saying the Our Father, the Hail Mary and thou who hast suffered wounds for us Christ Jesus have mercy on us I would like to have you do three works of mercy for people that are in need and so with that being said let us recite together the second act of confession I confess to Almighty God one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought for it indeed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Open wide the doors and gates, lift high the ancient portals. The King of Glory enters. Who is the King of Glory? He is God, the mighty Lord. Lord, for us your wounds were suffered. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your Son as the Savior of the human race and a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the hook cross. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death that we may live in union with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. chief priests and the Pharisees gathered with the council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many miracles. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, say the daughter Zion, see the salvation comes, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, Cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen.
The Lord be with you. reading of the Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. My dear brothers and sisters, this is a lengthy um, gospel, and so if you are fatigued, I ask that you please sit. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at table with his apostles. He said to them, I have eagerly desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I shall not eat it again until there is fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from this time on, I shall not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which will be given for you. Do this in memory of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be shed for you. And yet, behold, the hand of the one who is to betray me is with me on the table. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man! by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among themselves who among them would do such a deed. Then an argument broke out among them about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. He said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors. But among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater, the one seated at table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one seated at table? I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials, and I conferred a kingdom on you, just as my Father has conferred one on me that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed that your own faith may not fail, and once you have turned back, you must strengthen your brothers. He said to him, Lord, I am prepared to go to prison and to die with you. But he replied, I tell you, Peter, before the cock crows this day, you will deny three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you forth without a money bag or a sack or sandals, you were in need of were you in need of anything? No, nothing, they replied. He said to them, But to now one who has a money bag should take it, and likewise a sack, and one who does not have a sword should sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you <clears throat> that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, namely, he was counted among the wicked. And indeed, what is written about me is coming to fulfillment. Then they said, Lord, look, there are two swords here. But he replied, It is enough. Then going out he went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not undergo the test. After withdrawing about a stone's throw from them and kneeling, he prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, Take this cup away from me, still not my will, but yours be done. And to strengthen him, an angel from heaven appeared to him. He was in such agony, and he prayed so fervently that his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. When he rose from prayer and returned to his disciples, he found them sleeping from grief. He said to them, 
Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not undergo the test. While he was still speaking, a crowd approached, and in front was one of the twelve, a man named Judas. He went up to Jesus to kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? His disciples realized what was about to happen, and they asked, Lord, shall we strike with a sword? And one of them struck the high priest's servant and caught off his right ear. But Jesus said in reply, Stop, no more of this. Then he touched the servant's ear and healed him. And Jesus said to the chief priests and temple guards and elders who had come for him, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? <clears throat> day after day I was with you in the temple area, and you did not seize me. But this is your hour, the time for the power of darkness. After arresting him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter was following at a distance. They lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it, and Peter sat down with them. When a maid saw him seated in the light, she looked intently at him and said, This man too was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A short while later, someone else saw him and said, You too are one of them. But Peter answered, My friend, I am not. <clears throat> About an hour later, still another insisted, Assuredly, this man too was with him, for he also is a Galilean. But Peter said, My friend, I do not, do not know what you are talking about. Just as he was saying this, the cock crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord. Lord, how he had said to him, <clears throat> before the crow, cock crows today, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. The men who held Jesus in custody were ridiculing and beating him. They blindfolded him and questioned him, saying, prophesy, who is it that struck you? And they reviled him and saying many other things against him. When the day came, the council of the elders of the people met, both high priests and scribes, and they brought him before the Sanhedrin. They said, If you are the Christ, tell us. But he replied to them, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question, you will not respond. But from this time on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further need have we for testimony? We have heard it from his own mouth. <clears throat> then the whole assembly of them rose and brought him before Pilate. They brought charges against him, saying, we found this man misleading our people. He opposes the payment of taxes to Caesar and maintains that he is the Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. Pilate then addressed the chief priests and the crowds, I find this man not guilty. But they were adamant and said, he is inciting the people with the teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began even to hear. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean, and upon learning that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent them to Herod, who was in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was, Herod was very glad to see Jesus. He had been waiting and <coughs> wanting to see him for a long time for he had heard about him and had been hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at length, but he gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes, meanwhile, stood by accusing him harshly. 
Herod and his soldiers treated him contemptuous, contemptuously and mocked him. And after clothing him in resplendent garb, he sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate became friends that very day, even though they had been enemies formerly. Pilate then summoned the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me and accused him of inciting the people to revolt. I have conducted my investigation in your presence and have not found this man guilty of the charges you have brought against him. Nor did Herod, for he sent him back to us. So no capital crime has been committed by him. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. But all together they shouted out, Away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Now Barabbas had been in prison for a rebellion that had taken place in the city and for murder. Again, Pilate addressed him, still wishing to release Jesus. But they continued their shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate addressed him a third time, What evil has this man done? I found him guilty of no capital crime. Therefore, I shall have him flogged and then release him. With loud shouts, however, they persisted in calling for his crucifixion, and their voices prevailed. The verdict of Pilate was that their, man, their demand should be granted. So he released the man who had been imprisoned for rebellion and murder for whom they asked. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they wished. As they led him away, they took hold of a certain Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country. And after laying the cross on him, they made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. Jesus turned turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep instead for yourselves and for your children. For indeed the days are coming when people will say, Blessed are the barren, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. At that time people will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now, two others, both criminals, were led away with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him and the criminals there, one on his right, the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. They divided his garments by casting lots. The people stood by and watched. The rulers, meanwhile, sneered at him and said, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the chosen one, the Christ of God. Even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him, there was an inscription that read, This is the King of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save us in yourself. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, Have you no fear of God? For you are subject to the same condemnation. And indeed, we have been condemned justly. But the sentence we received corresponds to our crimes, but this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. 
Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Let us pause and kneel. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent, beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. Now there was a virtuous and righteous man named Joseph, who, though he was a member of the council, had not consented to their plan of action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea and was awaiting the kingdom of God. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. After he had taken the body down, he wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid him in a rock-hued tomb in which no one had been buried. It was the day of preparation, and the women, excuse me, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come from Galilee with him followed behind, and when they had seen the tomb and the way in which the body was laid in it, they returned and prepared spices and perfumed oils. Then they rested on the Sabbath, according to the commandment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The adventure of Apollonius is Christus. <laughs> peace I leave you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives, but as I give unto you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid from the gospel according to John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, of the many titles that were given to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I feel that his title Prince of Peace is so appropriate for today and today's world. Amid the images of the devastation of bombed out cities and towns in Ukraine, such as Mariupol, to the unbelievable images of the mass graves found of innocent men, women, young and old, who were tortured 
beaten, raped, and massacred in towns such as Bukka and others. This Palm Sunday is a cry in the world for peace. It is a cry for deliverance from the oppressors of this world. It is a cry that million who have been displaced from their homes. It is a cry for justice, especially, most importantly, the most innocent of all, the children. In the Gospel of Luke, we read, And when he, Jesus, came near and saw the city Jerusalem, he wept over it, saying, If you even now had only recognized on this day the things that are for your peace, but they are hidden from your eyes. On this Palm Sunday, I believe that our Lord cries over the cruelties of man's inhumanity to man, even after 2,000 years, the message of Jesus has not changed. If you even now had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. There are millions of people that are waking up this day in Ukraine, in Poland, in other countries. People who are living in basements, people who have lost their homes and everything. And it is on this Palm Sunday that they do not have palms to celebrate the entry of Jesus, but yet in their hearts they have made him Lord and Savior and the Prince of Peace. And so today, as we gather, may we all offer prayers for peace. The kind of peace that our Lord gives to us, not the kind of peace that the world offers. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, my sermon will be very short today, but the message is that just as in the case of Jesus, the only time that he welcomed any kind of devotion publicly on that Palm Sunday, we see that less than a week later, he was to be crucified for our sins and for the sins of the entire world. I pray that as you take the palms that you have received, realize that these palms are more than just a decoration that you place in your house. It is a symbol of your submission it is a symbol of your willingness to follow and to make Christ your Prince of Peace. And so again, may we come together this day and offer peace for the people of Ukraine, for the people of our world, for the people in our communities, as well as in our families and ourselves. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us this Palm Sunday. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and his Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Please be seated. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. My comforters, and I found none. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. May the suffering and death of your Son Jesus make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing, but may this perfect sacrifice. Win us mercy and love. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The suffering and death of your Son brought life to the whole world, 
moving our hearts to praise your glory. The whole power of the cross reveals your judgment on this world and the kingship of Christ crucified. Therefore, on this day, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and, un and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. On this day, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed, all those suffering from the coronavirus, Pray for not only them, but for their families. May we give God our thanks for the blessings of doctors, nurses, first responders, and all health care workers. Let us in our deepest prayers this day pray for peace and remember the people in Ukraine, all those who have been displaced, who are currently seeking residence in Poland and other countries. May we remember all those who fight for freedom and for justice. In our deepest prayers, let us remember all abused and neglected children in our world, as well as all abused and neglected animals. And for all victims of violence, both here and abroad, may we offer our prayers unto Almighty God and ask for his divine protection upon all those who serve in our armed forces. And let us pray for one another and for our families. Whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God, we join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, we ask you to bless, to accept, to confirm and render it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily, in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, 
and giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, in his blessed passion, resurrection, and glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and handmaidens who have gone before us with a sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. Give us this day 
Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future. And by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. That being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master awaken in all of us, living faith fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, and may it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. My dear brothers and sisters, prior to the distribution of Holy Communion, let us now offer up the <coughs> act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. <coughs> Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. <coughs> May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. shall we return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me. I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord,
Father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. All loving Father, you have satisfied our hunger with this sacred banquet. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us the perseverance and lead us to salvation. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the light, light with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Sunday, come together in the name of the Lord and pray for one another. May God bless all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord our God, your Son taught us how blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called your children. We come before you on this Palm Sunday, Father, in prayer for the people in Ukraine. We pray for all those who have lost and will lose their lives this day in a war, war that they did not seek nor provoke. We pray for all your people who have been displaced from their homes and country, especially the women, the children, the aged, who are now seeking safety and security. We pray this day for the defenders of this great nation and ask for your protection of your holy angels to guard and protect them all at this time of crisis. May all the people of Ukraine have the blessed assurance that you are ever present. We thank you, dear Lord, for Poland, for all those who have opened their homes to strangers in the, in the spirit of Christ Jesus. Holy Father, we pray for peace of those who live in fear around our world and the uncertainty of their futures. We pray also this day, dear God, for the oppressors, that they may see light instead of darkness, love without hate, peace without war. May we all come to a time, Heavenly Father, to a time where the prophet Isaiah spoke to you, O Lord, you will be the judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people, that they in turn will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and where nations will not take up sword against another nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Thou who hast suffered wounds for us, O Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.